Today we're going to be calculating the area of parallelograms. To be successful you're going to need to use your previous knowledge of triangles and parallelograms. You're going to be using both within problems today and you're going to need to use your knowledge of multiplication and formula. So before we think about parallelograms let's just consider a rectangle. How do I calculate the area of a rectangle? Height times base, just like we've done before. So this part you can do along with me if you want. Quickly pause the video, go and get yourself a piece of paper. Come back and you'll need some scissors um, also. So draw a line from the bottom left corner to somewhere along the top of your rectangle. So let me just get my line tool, a little bit thicker than that. Okay, let's go from bottom left up to somewhere along there. Oh, I thought that was going to go in front of it. Let's see if it does. Yes, right. So, from the bottom left corner to somewhere along the top. Hopefully you can see it creates a triangle. Cut out that triangle, like this, and move it to the other side of the paper. So let's move it from here, move it all the way, just like that, to the other side of the paper. So I didn't rotate it, I didn't turn it, I didn't move it up or down. I solely cut it out and do it one more time. I cut out the triangle and moved it all the way, slid it to the other side of the paper and you should have something that looks like that. And hopefully what you've noticed is you have now created a parallelogram. What shape have you created? A parallelogram. So the formula to find the area of a parallelogram is just base times its height because as you can see the area hasn't got any bigger, hasn't got any smaller. I started with a rectangle and I've, I haven't added any space to the inside, I haven't taken away any space to the inside, so the area must be exactly the same. So the method to find, the formula to find the area is exactly the same. Height times base. Now one thing to notice with parallelograms especially is sometimes the height could be given outside of the shape just like it is with my um, green one there. Sometimes it could be given on the inside Sometimes it could be intersecting um, one of the sides like this. It doesn't matter because it's anywhere from the bottom of it to the top of it. That's its height. So it could be anywhere along the shape. Just be careful for that. So let's have a look at this one. Area. Uh, where can I do this? Let's do this at the top. Area I know equals height times base. So the area of this one must be its height is 14, its base is 11 so the area of this one must be 154 again we're working in centimeters squared I just multiplied them out I could do 14 times 10 and add a 14 that's how I did it just now in my head or you can do a column method if you need to simple as that let's have a look at another one here sometimes I might have to multiply decimals out here so again the area to find the formula to find the area of a parallelogram is height times its base. So its height, this side is given outside of the shape. So its height is 8.5, its base is 3. So the area equals 25.5. And this time we're working in meters squared. Okay, that time I did 3 times 8 and then a half 3 and added it on. You could do it in column method if you wish. Just remember to remove the decimal point and add it in again afterwards to your answer. Okay. What I'd like to do now is to pause the video, have a go at your task one. So by, uh, I think green, you have five questions to do there. Blue, you only have the two, just to prove to me that you can do this as it is very simple. And come back when you're ready for task two. Right, task two now requires us to work backwards. As you can see, I want to find one of the sides. I'm now trying to find that side there. I'm given the area, I'm given the height, I need to try and find its base. So, its area is 128 well, kilometers squared in this one, but I'm not going to use my units until the very end. So 128. The formula is height times base, so I know its height, which is 4, and I will be timing it by its base. Well, this time it's labelled x, so let's label it x. No, I, there's not, 
I'm not going to label it X because I've got a time zone. I'm going to call it base. Maybe easier to call that base there. So, how do I now find what the base is? Well, if I want the base on its own this side, I'm going to divide them both sides by 4. I know we haven't covered any algebra at the moment, okay? but what I was doing with base was timesing it by 4 to get 128. So if I do 128 divided by 4, I'm just doing the inverse sum, it's going to leave me with whatever base is. So 128 divided by 4 is 32, so that must be what base is. And a good way to check it, let's do it. If I was to find the area, I'd be doing 4 times 32. I know, bam, 128 centimetres squared. So, B, we need to give an answer. B equals, let's do it here, B equals 32. And I'm working in, no, I'm not working in centimetres. My apologies, all of that needs to be changed. Both the Mr. Small's rubber, there we go. Sorry, it is kilometres. Kilometre squared, so 32 kilometres, that's what I'm working in today. So what I'd like to all do now is go on to task two. Green group, you have three of them to do. Blue group, you should be um, working a little bit ahead. You've only got two, so you should be quite a way ahead as you've got a fair bit to do after this. This is just a little bit of fluency to get you into it. So do that, come back when you're ready for task three. So, task three then. Task three, we're now looking at problems. Below is a diagram of a parallelogram inside a rectangle. The length of the parallelogram is half the length of the rectangle. So I can see that the base of the rectangle is 24 centimetres. So half of it must be 12 centimetres. So the base of my parallelogram must be 12 centimetres. Length of the parallelogram is half the length of the rectangle. I want to know the shaded region. Region, fancy word for area, shaded area. So I, my answer isn't going to be the area of the parallelogram this time, it's going to be everything else, as you can see here. So the best way I think to solve this is if I know the area of the rectangle, so if I go area of this rectangle and I subtract the white bit, it's going to leave me with everything that's left. So the white bit is the area of the parallelogram and that's going to leave me with the shaded region. So area, area of the rectangle first then. 9 multiplied by 24. So the area of the rectangle is 9 multiplied by 24 which gives me 216. So you do 9 times 20 and 9 times 4 or use a column method if you're not comfortable with that. Area of my parallelogram then will be its base is 12. Its height goes from the bottom of the rectangle to the top of the rectangle, similar to yesterday in our triangle problems. So its height must be the same as the rectangle. So um, it'll be 9 multiplied by 12. 9 multiplied by 12 is 108. Quick way is I could have halved the area of the um, rectangle there. So 216 halved, that would have worked because 9 times 24. 9 times 12 is half of it. And what I wanted to do there was I wanted to subtract those two. So that's going to leave me with 108 centimetres squared being that shaded region. What I'd like to do now is move on to task 3. You have very similar problems to do there. Green group, once you've done that, you have a little extension at the bottom. Task 4, see if you can draw that. If you can't print this off or you don't have excess uh, you are not able to draw this then don't worry about it, it is only an extension all answers at the bottom as I'm sure you are aware if you are in blue group you will be ahead of this, you have three um, problems to do there and then some mastery problems to do underneath task 4 your extension here, task 5, I want you to investigate how to calculate the area of a trapezium anyone in Green group who has flown through this, 
then please feel free to do this as well. I've left it on the board um, so you can, you can read it yourself. I know it's not on your sheet, but feel free to. Investigate how it works and present your findings. Okay, you may wish to include drawings to support you. Use some paper, cut some things out. That might help just as you, uh, as, as you did at the start if you were doing that along with me. And include a working example with measurements. See if you can, just like I have here, see if you can tell me the area of a trapezium. And as, as per normal, I'm sure you've already seen, all of your answers are underneath.